You have a really good podcast voice. Me? Yeah. <laughs> Everyone says that, and I still... It's, like, so smooth. People tell me they want, like, I sound like I ate glass. What's that? Like, they oh. hate the sound of my voice. Oh, what oh, assholes. Wow. So this will be really entertaining for them. <laughs> I'm going to send it to them. <laughs> send it to the haters. Yeah. Send it to them. Uh, okay, well, here we go officially. Okay. <laughs> Third time. We got Ooh, this. Yeah. I'm just going to start the intro again. Welcome back to another episode of Two Hot Takes, you guys. Morgan here. Justin. Robin. We have Robin. She is Girl Boss Town on TikTok. Mm -hmm. And not a lot of people know my actual name on TikTok. It's very confusing. My name is not Girl Boss or like sometimes emails will say Miss Boss Town. I'm like, okay, I don't know if this is correct, but it's Robin or Girl Boss Town. I'll go by either. I'll post some links to her TikToks and you will instantly know who she is. She's gone viral for giving the best PR advice for people like the Kardashians. I think Madison Beer was a big one. The first one. Yeah. yeah. And brands as well. Uh, it kind of started with PR moves for Madison Beer and then celebrities started commenting on it and saying, do me next. And then brands got involved and it all trickled down and turned into a career, which is crazy, but the power of the internet, my friend. TikTok. That's awesome. Yeah. That's why we got a podcast going here. Yeah, And exactly. congratulations. I mean, some of the stuff I hear you say, I'm like, that is genius. Like how, wow. Just yeah. Wow. I think it all is because I was like, I call myself the ultimate consumer. So like I grew up just sitting and watching reality TV, which people think is really bad for you. Um, but I've made a career out of it because I know as an, like somebody watching the trajectory of celebrities careers, I know what I want to see them do. I know I, what I would do if things gone go wrong because I've seen it um, be done correctly and incorrectly. So I just started putting my opinions out there and people liked it, which is a blessing for sure. Well, you'll fit right in here on the show then. Perfect. I got a good theme for you that fits right into your PR genius. Okay. High profile and damage control. I think we all need that currently in our lives. Absolutely. Let's so, get it. Let's, let's do get it. Into it. Yeah. Okay. Let's dive in. Hi guys, I just want to talk a little bit about the upcoming live online show. I've been getting a lot of questions about it, so just want to answer the most frequent ones. So like I said, it is a virtual online digital show, so you can watch it from home. And how do you do it? You go to momenthouse.com slash THT and buy tickets. So I'll put the link in the description. Another common question I saw is, I can't make it that day. Could I watch it later? Someone even wrote in and said, I'm supposed to give birth that day. So I'd recommend buying the ticket now. And then you have an entire week after the show to catch up and watch it whenever you can. And that goes for both the live show and the after party as well. Where's the location of the meet and greet? Meet and greet is going to be online as well. So we'll be zooming together for about three minutes. Going to be kind of like an AMA, ask us anything. And I promise we're not scary. <laughs> Someone went, I'm dying to watch it, but it is 3 a.m. here and I can't fuck up my sleeping schedule, mental health. So there's actually going to be a bunch of different premieres. So if you can't make it on the Pacific time where we're at in Los Angeles, you know, stateside, then you can actually join other premieres and there's a bunch of other locations. So check out Moment House and see if there's going to be a premiere for where you are. Who's hosting the show? So it's actually going to be me, Alejandra, Lauren, and Justin, all four of us hosting with my dad, your favorite, popping in to say hi. How long will it be? If you do the live show and the after party, I would say it's at least going to be two hours. Do you already have all the stories picked out? Will anyone have a blind reaction? So this show is going to be kind of unique. Almost all of the stories that we're going to be reading have been sent in by you guys, and I'm trusting your recommendations. I read nothing more than the title on most of them and screenshotted them and added them to my live show folder. So almost all of them are going to be complete blind reactions for all of us. But the one that I found that I did read that I think is really, really good, that one you don't want to miss because I think it's going to replace Beetle Man on terms of our new favorite weirdo. Are you doing any sort of giveaway? We are going to be doing giveaways. I'm going to be giving away merch, some postcards, and stickers, and maybe some other surprises. Where can I buy and how much is it? 
Again, momenthouse.com slash THT. I'll put the link in the description of this. And tickets for the live show are only $10. What is the after party going to be like? It's going to be super fun. We're going to play card games like We're Not Really Strangers. And I have a couple other decks that Best Self Co. sent me. Really intimate, just us divulging our deepest, darkest secrets. What is the main topic going to be? So my overall theme is like happy birthday, THT slash me, because my birthday is actually the Friday before the show. And Two Hot Takes just turned one on February 10th. So it's going to be a party. So we're picking the best of the best. So the best mother-in-law story we could find, the best unhinged story. So the Olympics is going on right now, and this is going to be the Olympics of Reddit coming at you. But I think that answers all the questions I see here. I see everyone's responses that they've bought tickets already. And I'm so, so happy that you guys can come. I um, honestly feel like I'm that girl that's like inviting people to their birthday party and no one's going to come. So I've had a little anxiety about this, but I'm really excited and I can't wait to share these stories with you guys. And I'm trusting you to send me good ones. Um, I also have some really cool, unique things like listeners that actually sent in voice memos of their stories. So this is going to be a really fun experience and I can't wait to share it with you guys. So again, go to momenthouse.com slash THT to get your ticket. Thanks, guys. So up first, I, 24 male, am a public figure that is concerned with entering the dating scene. For context, I've been single for the last year after breaking up with my ex-girlfriend. I was pretty down about it for a hot minute, but I figured I'd just do my own stuff and stay single. I feel like I'm ready to enter the dating scene, but I am concerned with my public profile. I don't want to dox myself, but I'm a professional athlete for a well-renowned team on the west coast of the U.S. With that said, I am concerned with meeting girls that may take advantage of me due to my current status as a public figure. I'm also concerned about the power balance of dating and eventually entering a relationship with a girl that may not be in the same financial level. My primary concern is that my current position will attract girls that may not really care about me, but rather my status or financial standing. I am also concerned about the potential imbalance that the girl could feel. On the flip side, I also want to protect myself from a potential false accusation that can occur if things don't pan out and how a potential ex could feel vindictive afterwards. I bring this up because of some of the things I've seen with guys from other teams dealing with and just in general the news that can happen in the current climate. I've had a few different dates that went relatively well over the past month, but I didn't feel like anything meaningful and kept my options open to the dating scene. I think the last thing that is also worth bringing up is that I'm constantly traveling for much of the year and only really have stable time around the summer and early fall. To sum it up, how do you think I should maneuver around the dating scene with the aforementioned concerns I raised? Okay, well, first and foremost, he has something that not a lot of guys, no offense, have, which is self-awareness. Um, I think he is very self-aware of him <laughs> himself and his issues and like his strong points, his weak points, and he knows what he wants, which I think is rare. R- you took the words right out of my mouth. I think it's very rare. However, I think he kind of has um, a very, I don't want to say negative mindset, but like he's going going into it with all of the problems and putting all of his problems out there, which is concerning because like you said, he's seen it go bad in his friend's directions. But it's like you could also use it to your advantage and be like, I know exactly what I want and I'm going to be able to find that because it's like, there's no ifs, ands, or buts with me. Like you have to fit the mold or not. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? And there's going to be a perfect person out there. I mean, I'm looking for an athlete, not for the wrong reasons. Um, I'm single, but I think he can find (laughs) the right person to fit that mold for him. But maybe stay away from dating apps. Um, I know they work. Yeah. Clearly. Um, but like maybe try meeting people out in public, which I think is like a rare thing to do nowadays, going out in public and meeting people in public. I know it's hard. Um, what do you think? I think uh, my first thought was like, okay, celebrity matchmaker, if you're that concerned about whatever. Mm -hmm. But then I'm like, okay, but the girls that go to those celebrity matchmakers, I'm like, maybe that's not right. So then I'm like, I think honestly like hinge or like a dating app Mm -hmm. that's not so like tinder hookups 
but don't put a single picture of you playing a sport. But have you met um, a woman before? Google creeping. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I will literally see where their pants are from and then like stand outside the store and like look for guys that look like them. Not that I've done that before, but um, <laughs> I just, I, 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 am, I am a girl clearly and I have friends and we do some investigative work on Hinge. Also, you don't want to, this is where it gets difficult because you don't want to like lie about your lifestyle because I think that can also get you into like a lot of trouble. True. I would say he doesn't want somebody who's in the same business as him. Um, he doesn't want a gold digger. Maybe go to like a yoga class. Like go where somebody like doesn't ha- doesn't have a lot of ego. That's such um, a good point. I just like stereo made a stereotype about yoga people that they don't care about e- um, egos. But go to a place where it's like maybe there's like some fitness involved, not a lot of ego involved, and meet somebody mutually that way. Or I think an amazing idea would be like a friend of a friend. So yeah. if you have a teammate who is married to like a great girl and it worked out for their situation, everybody's situation is different, but maybe be like, hey, like does she have any friends that like obviously aren't gold diggers and crazy? You know what I mean? Yeah, that sounds like the ideal situation. Like, especially if you have a guy that's been, like, on your team that's dating his high school sweetheart. And, like, yeah. you know that that guy's got a good girl who's with him for the right reasons. Mm-hmm. I'm sure she's got some nice friends. Yeah. Also, like, in business, I know you're not supposed to, like, um, hook up with coworkers. Um, but it happens every day. But, like, maybe there's somebody, like, on the business side of the NFL team or, like, an advertiser that comes around that, like, knows the industry but, like, isn't intimidated by the industry, is around super powerful people and is a powerful woman herself, maybe that could work out for him. I think that's a good idea. And that's, like, what some of the comments said, too. Yeah. Like, like the top one on this is find someone independent with an established career. They won't need you around constantly and will have their own finances and not be so concerned with yours. That sounds like me. Yeah. Like, so, like, I'm here. (laughs) You know that on Kardashian? We'll send, a, we'll send him a message for you. Yeah, on Kardashian. She's like, I'm dropping hints that I'm single. And then it's like a clip of her being like, I'm single. That's me <laughs> on this podcast. But no, yeah. It's it, that's it's a difficult situation, but it's, it's not impossible. No. You know I, what I mean? I feel like you're not actually ever going to truly avoid it, though. Yeah. Like, you can't just avoid it. Exactly. Yeah. And so you're going to meet those people, figure it out quick, and move on. Mm-hmm. But I think what you said is smart. I think friend of a friend or an introduction is Mm -hmm. a great way to do it otherwise you just got to meet people it's going it's going to happen you're gonna find the wrong people until you find the right one so like you can't just hold yourself back from dating just because you're scared of meeting someone who's going to take advantage of you you just got to go for it otherwise you're going to waste all this time (laughs) okay (laughs) like you're not gonna avoid it wise words yeah I think the yoga one is a good idea. I actually have a, a couple of friends that went to like a random yoga class at a small studio here in LA. And my friend Sarah walks in and she's like, Alejandra, Alejandra, that's Usher or Ursher. He goes by, his name is Ursher. She goes, that's Ursher. And Alejandra was like, no, it's not. And so he ended up like putting his mat out next to them. And during the class that, you know, the yogi teacher was like, introduce yourself to your neighbors. And so Alejandra <laughs> turns to him and she goes, hi, I'm Alejandra. And he goes, Ursher. And she looks at Sarah and she goes, you were right. Okay. Um, that is a piece of information that I'm not going to stop thinking about for a little bit. Um, the fact that Usher does Donward Dog is like wild. But she said he was so good. I can see that. I've also heard that he's like very, very sexual, like almost like a sex addict. I think that was like a rumor I heard on the fifth grade bus. There's some like fifth grade bus rumors that like are ingrained in my memory. Um, Just haunting you. Just haunting me. And they're all so false. And I'm like, I wonder where that started. Maybe Reddit. I think it probably Mm -hmm. started on Reddit. But aren't you not supposed to talk to people in a workout setting? Mm. Isn't that a big no? Well, maybe like walking out or walking and he's just like standing at the door. Like that might be creepy. Yeah, yeah, I guess. You see, um... I don't know the approach. I yeah. just know the destination. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think, honestly, workout studio might be the best bet because the more I think about this, I used to go to Cycle House here in LA with Jessica Elba all the time. She was at my class all the time. That's not intimidating at all. 
it was really motivating to have her like she always was like a bike like upper row and then left or right so mm-hmm. it was like I'm like if Jessica Alba just had a baby and she's pedaling like I can fucking pedal too yeah um you will never catch me um in a fitness studio but if he wants <laughs> to you know <laughs> slide in go right ahead okay we'll, we'll message him for you perfect there's also like just one last note though too because like drake and the um hot sauce condom issue came up recently did you see what i said about that no i think that um frank's red hot needs to do an ad campaign like a super super sexy ad campaign with uh two hot people in the bedroom like feeding each other the hot sauce and be like how to spice up the bedroom the right way at drake um that's amazing i don't think they've listened to me Let's send some emails. Yeah, of course. Because that's genius. But I like that. Thank that's, you. I like that. That's great. Yeah. So this guy, you know, you can't be too careful. I mean, if Drake is going to get hot sauced. Yeah. Now, whenever I'm on a date, I like look and like look around their house. I'm like, there's hot sauce here. <laughs> <laughs> that's why you got to. I show up to the guy from the NFL's house. I'm like, where's the hot sauce? Oh, my God. <laughs> I don't know why, like. I hear a lot of guys like flushing condoms. Like we talked about this. Like a lot of guys would like flush condoms, and we're I, worried about like plastic straws. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like well, people are flushing condoms. Don't That's even, the real issue. Don't even get started. We just had a tampon gate on this podcast actually about like girls flushing tampons. So, okay, I've yeah. I've been guilty. Yeah, you flushed a condom before. Not I a have. Tampon. Yeah. No, oh. not no. No, <laughs> actually, no. Well, maybe. I, well, and so I thought about this. I'm like, I have like the tie technique. So I just like, after you slide it off, you stretch it back out and then you like wrap it around your hand, like the balloon, like you tie yeah. a balloon and then tie it. But then I'm like, all someone that's like trying to get themselves pregnant has to do is like pop a hole and then squirt it in their cooch. So. Okay. Um, I like the hot sauce. Yeah. Honestly. No, no, no. Hot sauce is dope too. Or like wasabi, you know, you yeah. can switch up your spices. You just need to be paprika. sure. You yeah. just like got to make sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe don't hook up the first time you meet someone okay. learn learn their it their depends. tricks yeah <laughs> oh god <laughs> okay up next my 26 male girlfriend 28 female is an actress who played a pleasure girl in game of thrones Mood. How, how do i get my friends to shut the hell up about it so i mean i don't know how much to elaborate my girlfriend is an actress and had a has had a few roles but mostly background stuff She's also a substitute teacher and a server at a diner. So I hate this idea that things she's done on screen define her because she works so hard to try and get her dream career off the ground. I don't know the exact time, 10 years ago maybe, when she filmed, but she was hired to play several background roles in Game of Thrones and spent several months in both England and Croatia on set. Unreal. Pretty dope. One of the things she did was be a pleasure girl in Littlefinger's brothel. If you know when to look, it's obvious who she is. She's fully nude and implied sexual activity with another girl. Two of my friends saw this and asked her. She said yes. Now it's spread around my friend group like a wildfire. It sucks that all of my friends have seen my girlfriends naked, but their comments suck more. Some are annoying about what it was like to film. Others are just perverted. They do it with and without her around. When she's not around, it's a lot more vulgar. What can I do to get them to stop? I get so mad, and I think they find it funny. I feel trapped. What can I do? Well, I think we shouldn't be looking at what the girlfriend did to make her dreams come true, but you should be looking at your friend group. Um, I don't think that you should worry about what they're saying about your girlfriend. You should be worried that they are saying something to begin with. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's like a making them stop, stop type of thing. I think it's like reevaluating that the people that you spend your time with. Um, I also think that like in general, whether it was like your girlfriend or not, just like speaking about women in that way. I know some people believe in like, like locker room talk or whatever, but it's just like, how old are you? Um, Especially if you know I care about this person, like, what is the point? And honestly, she was, like, living her best life in Croatia, in the UK. And what were they doing? Like, getting, like, dollar margaritas at Chili's. Like, <laughs> right. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> I, I'm not here for the friends, but I'm here for the girl. Yeah. I love Game of Thrones. Like, it would you be. You know I've never, like, watched. Oh, my God. It's so The one good. thing I've never watched. Whoa. Yeah. yeah. It's good. That's going to be the most hate I get. Like, you have some homework to do. Yeah, I do. I you really do. Avoid the last season. Just Wait, end, but why? End at seven. 
Um, I am like, I love TV shows so much. Like I watch every single series and I want to watch it like when I'm ready. Um, and like, just like fully take it in when I have time and like can, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, I know I'll be addicted to it and I'll love it. Like it's so my vibe. Uh, But I just want to like wait until like I'm, I want to wait until I'm ready. You got to get the right TV, the right sound system. (laughs) Do it right. Maybe it'll be in the NFL man's house. There There we go. There you go. (laughs) There you go. Game of Thrones does need some PR, though, because that last season wrecked them, and mm-hmm. they're coming out with a new show, so might be the time. Yeah, it might be the time to watch it. Yeah. What would you do if your friends acted like this, Justin? Ooh. Put you I, don't on ha- I, I just wouldn't have friends that would act like this, but I guess if I ended up in this situation, I don't, like, I understand if it's, like, someone giving you shit, like, the first mm-hmm. time. Like, mm-hmm. oh, shit, like, yeah. you're, bo- whatever. But when it's continued, that's when it's, like, I wouldn't. I don't know. I I I would have drawn a line a lot earlier than yeah. the constant like coming back to it. And I kind of I've also been in the position where you push something off and you just kind of it's easier to not engage. Yeah. But like this would start to drive me nuts. It's not that they're making her feel bad. It would be that they're making her feel bad and it's driving me fucking crazy. Yeah. Like it's I don't know. It's just so degrading. And like yeah. she's she's a person. I think it's so cool. She was in a huge show like that. I mean, that show was like really revolutionary for a lot of people, myself included. So it's it's a cool plug. So it's like, yeah, okay, you can ask your questions. Like, oh, you were in it? How was it? Was filming cool? Like, blah, blah, blah. But like then to be like perverted and yeah. it's... Uh. I think what you said too is good. It was like the first time people be like, holy shit, like that's fucking wild. Like mm-hmm. that's so crazy. Right. Like, oh, like, look at your girl, damn. But then yeah. like after <laughs> it would be like, okay, like are we still fucking bringing this up? Exactly. Yeah. Like what? Like do yeah. you guys have nothing else in your life that's relevant yeah. to talk be, about? And I, I'd also be like, at least I have a fucking girlfriend. Like, True. what are you doing? Who was in fucking Game, Game of, of Thrones. Thrones? True. Yeah. <laughs> this, um, this to me kind of gives the vibe. Have you seen all this stuff on TikTok lately about euphoria? And of course. like, so there's like kind of that like double standard where like it's okay to see girls naked on TV, but then like to see a guy naked on TV, it's just like the guys are all like, ew, ew. Like, yeah. And like having a bad taste in their mouth. So it's like, it's just like kind of that double standard coming out where it's like she's so sexualized because of being on this show and granted yeah it's a sexual role but that doesn't mean she needs to have that in her real life i agree 100 percent. wild just wild yeah i would own that shit i would too even as a guy like I let's ha- go i'll take that role you want it yeah well let's see if we can get you a background role two for- takes unsupervised <laughs> okay <laughs> that sounds like a porno don't put yeah <laughs> Poor, poor it's the new channel here. i gotta I'm like promote this, i'm like nodding i'm like yeah i gotta promote <laughs> like the new that. channel <laughs> Uh, okay. Gotta have some like buzz about it, right? PR. Yeah. yeah. Something a little like out there. As Kim Kardashian once said, nude selfies till I die. There we go. We're approved. Yeah. Yeah, you gotta take your nude <laughs> selfies. In the wise words of Moira, you wanna have something to look back on. Exactly. So speaking of Kardashians, this story gave me Kardashian vibes. Love it. My 22 female boyfriend, 23 male, is a professional athlete. The season has started, and already the gossip is going. Here we go. My man and I have been together for about a year or so, and last spring he got drafted to a major team. Of course I'm happy and excited for him, but he's on the road a lot since then, and I feel like our relationship is becoming strained. And he's become distant, but he always chalks it up to the stress and wanting to make an impression on his team and the tough schedule he has. I could accept that, and he came home a lot when he could to spend time with me and his fam and brought beautiful gifts. I couldn't make it to his first game, but I made sure to watch it and tell him how proud I was of him. And he made sure to tell me how lucky he was to have me. This morning, I went on a forum that often talks about athletes and the T, aka the dirt on their personal lives. And it mentioned that my man has been talking to groupies and was seen hanging out and leaving the club with a bunch of them, along with some of his boys that are on the team. I'm freaking the fuck out. I sent him a text to call me ASAP. My friends and everyone is telling me that he's an athlete now and, quote, shit happens. And that what happens on the road should stay on the road. I love him, but I don't know what I should believe. Has anyone ever dated a pro before? What am I getting myself into? Is it possible this shit is just lies or should I grill him? 
Okay, a couple of things. Um, stress is every man's side chick. Um, I don't believe in stress. I actually think it's another bitch. So when he's saying he's like stressed, he's definitely like hanging out with another girl. And I might be cynical, but if it's an athlete, I think that's true. Also, you really want to like Jedi mind check. Jedi mind trick all of this because if you text him and say, hey, call me ASAP, he's going to have his guard up. He's going to have his excuses ready. Oh, yeah. What you need to do is be like, hey, like I bought some stuff at the store. Like I would love to FaceTime and show you like I miss you so much. Like let's like FaceTime later to get him excited, catch him off guard. And then when you have him on the screen where you can see his facial expressions, if his nostrils are flaring, it means he's lying and confront him (laughs) about the situation. Also, I would love to know what this forum is because, like, this sounds like something I would read on a Tuesday night, like, before I go to bed. I love the tea forum. Yeah. Um, At the end of the day, I think there are good guys. I think there are good athletes. But where there's smoke, there's fire. And people don't just make up stuff about, like, athletes leaving clubs. Like, obviously, it's a known thing that, like, athletes leave clubs with girls. But for somebody to, like, take the time and effort to put it out there, it's like, eh, I would be a little skeptical about that. Yeah, definitely. I have a couple things on my mind. Okay. I am stressed a lot. Okay. So I don't know what that means. But I do get stressed. Scary. (laughs) You do get stressed. We've all Oh, yeah. (laughs) Um, But I... I think I have to play devil's advocate in the sense that there's no, there's nothing necessarily saying that something was wrong. And like, I know many cases where like, even you have ended up at guys houses with all of your girlfriends after a night at like the club. Ooh, it's getting personal. And Mm -hmm. so it's like, is that at what point are you going to start? I mean, I feel like there needs to be more before Mm -hmm. it's like, you're wrong. Mm -hmm. Because, yes, you are in that circle. The same thing's in music. And Mm -hmm. I think that you end up in these situations, you get pulled from party to party and whatever. It just depends on how you act and how you react to that situation. Mm -hmm. But I think if it were me, I'd probably be a little more upfront because we're just so in touch where I'd be like, hey, I know I was going to come back, but we're we're going to X, Y, Z. It's not like a big secret. And she's not going to hear from friends, oh, we went back with girls. So I don't know. It's yeah. it's an interesting situation. It, it would be also helpful to know the context of the gossip, the tea, the website. Yeah. Because um, it said that he's been known to be like talking to groupies. So it's like, are they just leaving a club or do girls have receipts type True. of thing? So I'm going to be honest. I used to look at these websites. Um, what is it? So it's like WAGS. It's the like wives and girlfriends. And so it would like literally have a – it was almost like a Reddit-style – blog. Is that Tristan had, Thompson on the cover every month? He probably is nowadays. Yeah. Nice. That's why it reminded me. I'm like, this is Chloe. This is poor yeah. Chloe. But, um, I think they're pretty accurate. Like they actually post the screenshots from girls. They're like, they have pictures of guys leaving clubs. And like, I'm like in my head after this, I'm like, was I, I wasn't a groupie. I didn't like sleep with them, but like we would go out with, um, the Kings here in LA all the time. Yeah. Same. And like a couple of them that were married, had kids at home, would like grab my friends and start dancing with them. And there was another one that was like getting engaged or was engaged and getting married in a couple of weeks or something. And I had a friend visiting from Minnesota and like they hooked up. And I'm like, yeah, I lived, when I lived in LA, I was in the club scene and I know a lot of girls that hooked up with athletes who have um, wives and kids. Yeah. I was always the friend getting tagged along with, like, the cousin in the back of the Uber. Um, <laughs> but if the cousin wants to hit me up, I'm single. <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, no, I've, see, I've seen it happen yeah. so much. As- so much. Especially when they're new and they're rookies and they're, like, trying to impress the guys and trying to fit yeah. in. Like, I, I would fully believe, like you said, where there's, where there's smoke, smoke, there's, there's fire. fire. Especially with this one. And, unfortunately... He's, she needs to find herself a Pete Davidson. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we all need a Pete Davidson. I know. I got mine right here. Me too. Wait, no, Ryan. Oh. <laughs> Soon. 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 After this drops. Soon. That's right. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, the top comment, honestly, this poor girl is clearly struggling. Like, she's replying to everyone's comments. Mm. But the top one is, like, speaking as someone that dated an athlete for a minute, I would tell you to proceed with caution. Groupies are everywhere. Holy God, are they everywhere. 
The stories I've heard and some of the behaviors I've witnessed and nothing short of incredible. And I've dated a musician too. The temptation is very real. The guy I dated personally fit the gossip and stereotypes to a T. Isn't it crazy how somebody's career can make them more fuckable? It's like, imagine if we acted this way about, like, electricians. Librarian. Like, literally. It's like, oh, my God, he's a fucking electrician. Right? Like, I need to talk to him. Like, it's all because they bounce a fucking ball. I know. Like, what? That it's, is interesting. It's wild. And, like, an electrician like tech, is tech, cooler. Like, tech people make a shit ton of money, but we're not like, oh, my God, like, a tech, like code me like you know what it's I mean it's more the like, limelight right yeah it's, it's like but is that what you want like do you yeah. want to be with somebody that everybody wants like that's just I don't you know you think you do when you're like when you're that age like in hindsight True. I'm like you think you do but like tech bro speaking of like when I was single I actually was so so close to moving to Seattle because I went there for like a little girls weekend and on the trip the tour guide of like the duck the water duck that like it's a truck but then goes in the water we had those in Boston yeah they're so fucking cool yeah. <laughs> but he was like honestly girls if like you guys are single there is a 13 to 1 guy to girl ratio in the city so feel free to move here and have your pick I was so close. you're telling me to move to Seattle? No, no, you weren't. I was so close. No way. Yeah. That doesn't sound like you at all. I was so close. I thought it'd be so fun. I had a friend that lived there, my friend Bree, and I was like, she's loving it. I loved it when I visited. I was like, I'm going to go live there. Okay, time to Interesting. move. Interesting. Yeah. No, we got to have you here. You're too much fun. Okay. <laughs> what? <laughs> I was uh, late to the party on that Okay. <laughs> Am I the asshole for making my celebrity hall pass someone I already have the phone number of? Oof. I, wow. Yeah. This is good. I, 26 female, have just started dating a longtime friend of mine, 28 male. We know pretty much everything about each other, and so far the relationship has just been a dream. The other night, however, we were talking about celebrity hall passes over dinner as a joke. He said Margot Robbie... I think that's how you say it. Robbie. Robbie. Every time. He said, Margot Robbie, which is a great pick, if I do say so myself. I then said mine, who admittedly is someone who has already slid into my DMs and I've been talking to for quite a while. Mm. We live on two very different continents and he's pretty busy all the time with different events. And so we haven't actually hooked up. Boyfriend got super offended and mad that I would pick someone that I can potentially sleep with while his is entirely theoretical. Am I the asshole? Um, is this like an ex One Direction member? I feel like this has like Louis Thompson or however you say it written all over it. Cause like <laughs> same. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> but I one, how does your boyfriend know that you have him in his phone? Like, is he aware of this situation? Are you super upfront about it? When was the last time that it happened? Also, like I don't know, like the whole concept of like a celebrity hall pass is like you're kind of giving, being given the opportunity to be like, I think this person is hot and I'm allowed to say that because they're my quote hall pass. True. It's not like, oh, I can actively pursue this person. Yeah. And and like I wouldn't even let my boyfriend have a celebrity hall pass. I'd be like, you're going to detention. Like no hall pass. Like <laughs> yeah. you can't use the bathroom. Like you literally have to sign out when you go to the bathroom and come back with me. There's no hall pass. Like yeah. it's like I would watch you walk in and out of the bathroom. But that's a whole other story. What are your thoughts on it? I think this is like one of the most asshole -ish stories I've ever heard. I think mm -hmm. like the fact too that she says they're still talking. Like they're still talking and I've been talking to for quite a while. So it's not like yeah. he slid into her DMs. That's oh, wait, the other the thing too. The guy has the girl? The girl was um, DM'd by this celebrity okay, who so is Okay, so it's her, the girlfriend. Yeah. Okay, yeah, okay. That's what I thought. Yep. Yeah. So it's like he slid into her DMs. So this is like the most attainable celebrity hall pass you could have. Mm -hmm. Like he, you already know he wants you. He wouldn't have slid in your DMs yeah. otherwise. Like imagine if it was Harry Styles. Mm, Olivia Wilde better watch out. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like you, you're being a dick when like Margot is someone who is like married with a baby so out of this world unattainable. Mm -hmm. Whereas like yours is like you could have it if you wanted. Yeah. Literally. So essentially you're just like looking to cheat. That's what I'm saying. And like, that what's the point of even bringing this up in the conversation? You know right, what I mean? It's exactly. like, who do you guys want to cheat on each other with? I would yeah. cheat on this person. <laughs> no, your cheatable person is more obtainable. It's like, let's like just like not talk about who we would cheat with. Like, let's be like, you look really cute tonight. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. 
I don't know. It almost makes it seem like she wanted to plug it. Like That's she what I'm wanted saying. to like brag. Mm-hmm. Like this guy wants me. I actually have his number. We talk. Yeah. It's just weird. It's very weird. I'm not into it. I don't like it. Yeah, no. That would be that would ugh. I, I would not forget that for a long time, I feel like. Yeah. Because yeah. then anything now becomes sketchy, right? Yeah. As soon as something like that happens, oh, me and the girls are taking a trip over to Europe. Just a girl's, then you're like, okay, sure you are. Yeah. Instead of just being, all right, like, have fun. And then she'd be like, I've been really stressed. I need to go to Europe. Yeah. So you know stressed. what I mean? Yeah. This is bad. Yeah. I need to let off some steam. No, exactly. Yeah. Top comment. You're the asshole. He literally has no chance of banging Margot. <laughs> you potentially have a shot at your celebrity hall pass because you're DMing him. I'd be pissed too if I was in your boyfriend's position. You're the asshole. This is a theoretical game to most people. Don't pick someone you could actually fuck. Truth. Which, like, yeah, like, granted, I just, like, I have some, like, guy friends that, like, played and play in the NHL, and that would be, like, me being, like, oh, Justin, like, I'm going to put so-and-so on my pass. And it's, like, but, yeah. To be, like, me picking a music artist, you know? It's, like. Yeah. It's too. Yeah. Like, why? Why, people? Why? I'm into it. So silly. There's, like, one more that's, like, on the celebrity theme, Mm -hmm. and then the rest are getting... I'm introducing you to my realm. Love it. Of just juicy, weird Reddit and damage control. I'm here for it. And, you know, honestly, I've never been, like, that big of, like, a Reddit girly, Um, but I've gotten a little bit more into it now. I love... My favorite Reddit, like, whatever it's called, is um, the producer from the Jersey Shore... Oh, did, that'd be crazy. Yeah, so the producers from the Jersey Shore did like an AMA, um, and I love reality TV, and she answered everything, like about all of the seasons, like were they doing drugs, like who was actually hooking up, like what's oh the real God. story oh, behind cool. it, and it's so interesting. I was on it for hours, and then I used to watch this show called Kid Nation growing up. Literally nobody's seen it, but they took 50 kids and put them on this set. I think it's actually outside of LA, but it's like where they used to shoot a bunch of like Western movies. You know what I mean? Okay. Um, and they put 50 kids there, no adults, obviously besides the camera crew. Yeah. With like no food, like nothing and made them like come up with like a uh, civilization. It got canceled because one of the girls like <laughs> burned her arm on like this like steel thing cooking. They, they had to chop off the chicken's head to make chicken. Like this is, it's called Kid Nation, you guys. Like you guys need to watch it. It was on like NBC. Like it was normal. I watched when I was little. And there's, like, so much Reddit information of people who were on Kid Nation. Oh, my um, God. So those are the types of Reddits that I dive into. But I'm extremely excited to hear your world of Reddit. Because mine is, like, very niche yeah. and very <laughs> weird. Um, we're going to have to have you back. And you can prepare the stories for me yeah, or something. No, you'll love it. That one sounds insane. I wonder if, like, any of those kids sued for, like, emotional or mental damage. Because during quarantine, <laughs> during the COVID, they all started popping up on TikTok. Um, and like rewatching the episodes and reacting, like you know how people do that. Yeah. Um, so they look okay. Like I, they definitely probably have some emotional damage. Are they like our age? Yeah. They oh my 20, god! Like around twenty-seven. Kid Nation. Kid okay. Nation. I'm gonna find it. You're gonna love it. I'm so excited. <laughs> okay. So next, am I the asshole for bringing my fiance to Christmas despite my famous cousin's wishes? My cousin is very famous. Yes, you have heard of him, and no, I won't tell you who he is. We'll call him Terry. When we have family functions, mainly for holidays, Terry likes for them to be only family so he can, quote, be himself Mm. and get drunk and pass out on the couch and share Hollywood gossip with us. Otherwise, he feels like he is being interviewed and having everyone talk to him or want a picture, and he has to be in promo mode. He said it's because he was tired of having to meet strangers and not be able to let loose. And there were some issues of these partners taking pics of him or spreading gossip. I hated this at first because I would be dating some chick and she would want to get to meet him. And it's awkward to tell them that they can't come to family events. And they get mad that they never get to meet him. My Tinder has a pic of me and Terry. But I get it. So I'm fine with it until this year. I began dating this chick in August. I couldn't bring her to Thanksgiving. Fine. But when I walk in, I see another cousin. Danielle has brought her boyfriend, Steve, Mm. even though they've been together for less than a year. They got together over New Year's and engaged on Halloween. Terry was fine with this because he's met Steve before. Old family friend. 
even though I've been told that no exceptions are allowed to this rule. Thanksgiving sucked because the whole time I was mad that I once again wasn't allowed to bring my girlfriend. My girlfriend consoled me after and I realized that she is my soulmate. Two weeks ago, I proposed and we got engaged. Whoa. (laughs) Okay. Moved fast. Yeah. Christmas was at my aunt's. I'm a believer in, quote, ask for forgiveness, not permission. So I brought my fiance because she had nowhere else to go and I wanted her to meet my family. We walk into the house and all hell breaks loose. Everyone was asking who she was and scolding me about the rules and Terry flipped out. He was already buzzed and looked 20 pounds heavier than he usually presents himself. Ouch. And started yelling at me for doing this to him. He didn't seem excited at all about my engagement or willing to introduce himself to her. Our grandma was telling Terry to get over it and asking to see the ring and saying she wished she had gotten my fiancé a gift, so grandma was on my side. But Terry was still arguing with me and said I shouldn't be allowed at any more events, and he ended up calling an Uber black and leaving before we even ate. To top it all off, my uncle, who has never even liked Terry, got upset because apparently Terry was his secret Santa so he didn't get a gift. So my uncle started blaming me for ruining Christmas. I get they are mad, but it was clear there was an exception for fiancés, and I'm embarrassed that my family was so rude to her when I just didn't want her to be alone on Christmas. This sounds like a fucked up version of the Family Stone. Like, this is like, (laughs) I don't even think Terry's the issue. I know, which issue do you want to dive into first? Like, Like, where? (laughs) There's the leaving Christmas in an Uber Black before dinner issue. Specifically an Uber Black. Yeah, like it's stated. Also, (laughs) Terry's weight issue is like, I don't think that needs to be spoken about. It's hard times out here. Yeah. Like, a few pounds here and there never hurt anybody. Um, this situation is extremely, extremely niche, but somehow I feel like we can all kind of relate to it because we Mm -hmm. all fight during the holidays with our families. Well, I mean, I do sometimes. I do. (laughs) And I just think that like Terry isn't the issue. Like, no, I think there's a lot more to this. And also red flag number one, if you have a famous family member or if you like take a picture with Alex Cooper from Call Her Daddy and put it on your hinge to try to get pussy, like grow up first and foremost. Um, And coming from a 27 year old to single. Um, But (laughs) like, I just, it's like he loves, he's in love with Terry. Yeah. He like loves having Terry, but like hates having Terry. You can't have your cake and eat it too. Very jealous. You can't have your Terry Mm -hmm. and eat it too. Nope. You cannot. Well, Terry can eat too because he's getting (laughs) a little (laughs) boy. But like, I'm here for it. Yeah. uh, It gets worse, you guys. There's more? There are more. So I dove into some of the comments. Is Terry in the comments? Terry did not come to the comments, but I love when that happens. It's my favorite. So top one, you're the asshole. You could have asked. You could also not use your famous cousin as a pick on Tinder. Mm-hmm. Good, mm-hmm. good job, Robin. Wait, yep. can I just ask, do we feel sympathy for Terry? Yeah. Um, or can Terry get off his high horse <laughs> because they're fucking engaged? Yeah. I don't know if ter- I don't know if sympathy is the word for what I have for Terry. Um, <laughs> but I don't know. I feel a little bad for him because I, from a just like a standpoint of like knowing celebrities and loving them and like going into their lives and their psychology. I feel like Terry definitely got famous when he was young, Mm -hmm. like when he was like a teen. Um, And I think when that happens, you have a lot of trust issues as you grow older, even with family. So if I was, um, what's Terry's cousin name? Who who wrote in? Did they say their name? They never did. If I was him, I would tell the fiance a fake rumor about Terry two weeks before Christmas and see if she leaks it. If she doesn't leak it, I would bring that evidence to Terry over lunch. (laughs) And I would be like, look, like, she's a real one. Like, I gave her this piece of information. She did nothing with it. Show Terry he can relax a little bit. Um, But also, like, it must be weird being, like, extremely famous and then getting shit-faced at your Christmas with, like, strangers there. Yeah. It's like, I I feel for Terry a little bit, but it's not just Terry's issue. It's not. I think my biggest red flag is the fact that they met in August. 
Th- yeah. Thanksgiving, he was already like, I'm so sad she can't be here. And then December, like, they're engaged. So it's like yeah. right. that timeline to me, like, I get love is love. And when you know, you know sometimes. Mm-hmm. But, like, a little weird. Yeah. Speaking of leaks, the next comment on this post. So it comes out through OP's comments that he didn't tell his family about the engagement early on because he's been engaged in the past. Mm. So OP says, I didn't tell them about the engagement because I knew they would be critical because my previous engagements, plural, didn't end up working out. And someone goes, how many times have you been engaged? True. Um, Multiple times. So this is the third. They then go on to say... Twice before, once when I was 19 and an idiot, so that didn't work out. Then again later on. And I thought she was the one. But it ended when she sent a story about Terry Mm. to TMZ to make a quick buck. Hence Terry's rule. Okay. You see, I think Terry is the underdog. Terry is not the issue. No. Terry has trust issues. We all do. I like your little um, suggestion Mm -hmm. of like, to trust people, start giving them fake stories yeah. and seeing if it comes out. I learned that from Jersey Shore, the season where they go to Italy. Mike Love makes that. up a fake rumor to see how fast it can go around. Um, but that's what you got to do sometimes. I love it. I think that's a great strategy. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like they've done that on like, um, maybe it was like The Godfather, or like some old movie. They're like, they give three different they people. The seed. Yeah, they give yeah. like three different people a different story. Mm-hmm. And then whatever one starts circulating, they know who the mole is. Wow. Yeah. I maybe did that in high school. <laughs> 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 kind of. Yeah. So OP clearly. Um, Clearly has some insecurities. Like people were calling him out for the Tinder picture, mm-hmm. and yes. they go, they go. I get plenty of matches on my own, but it's a good conversation starter. Oh yeah. Okay. okay. Sure. So yeah. is Terry's weight for him? Like he needs to reevaluate his conversation starters. <laughs> like there's so many details that didn't need to be included, and the weight was definitely one of the biggest ones. Yeah. Like Terry is fat phobic, and I'm just. I mean, no, 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 not Terry. Op. Op. <laughs> um, and I'm not here for that. No, it's it's pretty disgusting. That's like one thing I love about like the podcast. It's like, like I have friends that will message me and they're like, "You're famous," and I'm like, "No, like I just have like I just have a cute little podcast." Yeah, but like I've only gotten recognized like once, and it is like so nice that I can still go out and like grocery shop. Yeah, and it just it feels really good. But it's so weird with the world of social media and TikTok. It's like there's two types of famous. Um, but getting recognized is definitely weird. But like I will I will never be a Terry. I sympathize for Terry, but I'll never be a Terry. I'll get drunk with anybody on Christmas. Oh, I see what you're saying. I I'm just saying I probably wouldn't want to be a Terry. Yeah. Even if music exploded in some way on the yeah. artist side, I like I don't necessarily want to live that life by choice. Yeah. I don't think I would. Yeah. I can see how it would be challenge because especially because of stuff like this. Justice I mean, for Terry. You're seeing like one example of a struggle of that life, right? Yeah. And I'm not saying it's a hard life being famous, but I think there are downsides totally. to it that a lot of people don't recognize. A hundred percent. Yeah. I think like um I looking- mean look at Tristan Thompson, like in Chloe. Like Chloe's famous, has it all, and then she still can't get a man to be faithful to her. She needs to be done. It's honestly at this point, like, I feel bad, but it's also like, this is the second baby outside of your marriage or like multiple cheating, but yeah. like first, I guess, first baby after true. Hot mess, hot fucking garbage mess. But I I hope Terry is happy and enjoying drunk holidays. Let yeah. loose. Yeah, if he wants to enjoy some tequila shots and um, a slice of cake over the holidays and he doesn't feel safe around his family, uh, Terry can come over too. I think that actually (laughs) might be doable for you because OP does mention something about Massachusetts. (gasps) Oh, is Mm -hmm. this Ben Affleck? I'm not sure. I think it is. There we go. I think it is. We solved the mystery. Because he put on a little bit of weight like last year. Mm. Now that he's with J-Lo, he's slimmed down a little bit. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm the mole. <laughs> and let, so the smoking gun will be if you can find the Tinder picture. Yes. Oh. If you come across the Tinder oh picture. Oh, my God. I literally will be like, oh, <laughs> stop talking shit about Terry. <laughs> 
<laughs> just attack him. But he's engaged now, so well off the market. Maybe. Probably not for, for long. Now. Yeah, for now. <laughs> okay. We're getting into my neck of the woods now. Here we go. More damage control for real life situations. Okay. Am I the asshole for hiding embarrassing notes in my house as a joke because I know my fiance's mom snoops? I bought a house seven years ago and I met my fiance, Al, four years ago. This year he moved in. We're talking about making it a home for both of us. But as of now, he hasn't moved much stuff in. Right now, 95% of the stuff and furniture in the house is mine. When his mom comes over, she's kind of a snoop. He was used to that, but when she comes over to our house, it's so uncomfortable because she's just going through my shit. When I am bothered, she's like, oh, I was just helping with chores, etc. He said I should just let her because she has, quote, a lot of nervous energy. One thing she snooped on was actually embarrassing. In my home office, I had a little affirmation post-it note on my monitor saying, quote, I am smart, I am skilled, I am deserving of great things. It was a silly thing my therapist recommended to get me in a confident mindset before an interview. Anyways, she made a comment too about my ego. But as a joke, I decided to do it again. I had my best friend over and we got wine drunk and wrote a bunch of affirmations to hide. Some were in the medicine cabinet. My teeth will regrow. I am shark-like and powerful. Kitchen drawers. I know when to spoon, but I also know when to fork. I am sexy and (laughs) self-assured. Work desk. I will not just fuck my way to the top of the company. I will fuck my way to the top of the world. (laughs) Walk-in closet. I am beautiful with clothes and without, especially without. My boobs are legendary. Same. There was a bunch more, and my friend and I had a hilarious time writing them. Next time my mother-in-law came over, she saw a few. And she didn't acknowledge them to me, even though she definitely started acting a little weird around me. I went to run some errands, and when I was out, she confronted Al about the notes and was trying to tell him that I seemed unstable, egotistical, and moving in was a bad idea. She showed him the notes, and he didn't really know what to make of it. He asked me, and I said they were just some silly private notes to boost my self-confidence and make myself laugh. How had she gotten them? Had she been going through my things? He said she was just tidying and saw them. And they were real weird. I was like, have you met me? You should know how weird I am. Anyways, if you don't want your mom seeing my weird shit, you've got to stop letting her go through my shit. He asked if I left them on purpose to annoy her. And I admitted that was kind of the joke. But I also have other weird and private shit So what I said about her needing to stop snooping if she didn't want to find weird crap was still for real. He said I was making stuff hard for him. His mom was really protective and adjusting to him moving in with a girlfriend for the first time, and I was agitating her on purpose and making her think I wouldn't be a good partner when he wanted her to have the opposite impression of me. Am I the asshole for the note prank? Hell no. Well, it's like who wrote the note, like on Jersey Shore, not to bring it back to that. <laughs> but I think whenever you're writing anonymous notes, shit hits the fan, as we've seen in reality TV and in her closet. Sam, when you left bed the first night, Ronnie had his face in between a cocktail waitress's breasts. Um, but <laughs> I think that – I think the problem, like in a lot of these problems, isn't necessarily like – the mom snooping, but I think maybe there's tension or resentment there between the girlfriend and the um and the boyfriend about like the mom being there and her being in their space and them not really being able to properly communicate about it. Um, I don't know about this one. Like, I, I think it's weird that the mom is snooping. I think it's funny that the girl is doing it, but like, I don't really know where I would go from there. You know what I mean? Yeah. How do you damage control this? I would say I would write an apology note um, and maybe ask her to go to lunch in the apology note. And if she finds it, you can kind of be both be like, look, I was wrong for writing this. Look, I was wrong for snooping. Let's like get on a better like 
let's have a better relationship. Mm -hmm. We're both going to be here and like, let's not write little notes. And then maybe make an, have an Etsy person make one of those like, um, cheesy TJ Maxx signs. That's like, I am woman. I am beautiful. And have uh, the girlfriend give it to the mom and be like, this is for, um, (laughs) snooping. I I like this, uh, compromise on the, the well, I like that as a solution, but I fucking love this move. I think it's I hilarious. I love doing it. I love if something's bothering you, and I feel like to go to this this level, I think it has been brought up to the boyfriend probably, and he just shoves it off because he doesn't want to deal with his mom. Mm-hmm. And so I love the fact that she did it because it's directly exposing the problem and yeah. saying, look, here's what's happening. Where do you think the fucking notes came from? And the boyfriend comes to the conclusion on his own. I like that it levels the playing field in a sense, and then the damage control. Yeah. But yeah. I, I, there's something about it that I just love yeah. the pettiness of it. I, I love it. I, I think love this, being petty. Is this <laughs> malicious compliance? This might be a little malicious compliance happening here, which is like my new favorite word lately. I just I have no idea what that means. So essentially it's like your boss being like, you can't leave if you aren't done with all your work. Or I don't know. I'm butchering this. Oh my God. What was the example? Oh, okay. So I had a story recently where it was like this girl writing in like, am I the asshole for messing up Thanksgiving? And so her partner's mom hated her and called her by the wrong name all the time. So her name was Jenny. The mom was calling her Janet. And so she goes, oh yeah, Janet should make the turkey for Thanksgiving. And she goes, oh yeah, Janet should. That's a great idea. Thanksgiving comes, she shows up without a turkey and they go, what the fuck? You were supposed to make the turkey. And she's like, I thought Janet was. Because her name was Jenny. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Malicious compliance. I like that. Yeah, so that's what this feels. Like, the boyfriend was like, oh, just ignore it. Or fiance. Mm -hmm. Like, just ignore it. It's fine. She's just nervous. And then she's like, well, I'm just going to fuck shit up and keep writing my notes. Yeah, no, I agree. I think it was petty, but like funny and not, it didn't hurt anybody in the end. You know what I mean? And now's the time to resolve, like you said. Yeah, exactly. If you continue down that path, you're going to drive the wedge. Yeah. But yeah. Yep. Yeah, I get some, re- like, mama's boy red flags with this one, though. That's what I'm saying. I think there's a little bit of a deeper issue than just, like, the notes. Oh, right. yeah. Mama's yeah. boy that cannot draw boundaries because if, like, your mom was going through my underwear drawer, like, we would shut that shit down. And the fact that he can't, like, she's putting these notes in pretty, like, yeah hidden places by the sounds of it. Like, her bras, she found the one in her bra drawer. Like, your mom yeah. shouldn't be going through there. No. Right. And then for him to be like, oh, she's just really protective and adjusting to him moving in with a girlfriend for the first time. They're engaged. This is your <laughs> fiance. Maybe um, the last guy, Terry's ex fiance, um, is his other ex too. Oh, gosh. You know what I mean? It could all come full circle. <laughs> you never know with these stories. Yeah. You never know. That would be crazy. <laughs> Connecting two random she, yeah. ass stories. She's, like she's leaving Terry notes, being like, <laughs> "I am sober. I am skinny." <laughs> Poor Terry. I know. I love him <laughs> so much. Tom. Terry's my type. <laughs> <laughs> Terry. Out of all these people, I think Terry's my type. Uh, Terry sounds like a good time, honestly. Yeah. So, top comment on this one: Not the asshole. She's snooping through your home. I'd have gone further and left little notes like, quote, nobody likes a snoop and, quote, you aren't welcome to go through my things. Mm. But yours were pretty damn funny. It's a red flag if your fiance stands up for her invading your privacy like yeah. this. I agree. Yeah. OP responds back. Haha, I was thinking a set of butt plugs increasing in size to the absurd would be pretty funny, but pointed notes could be funny too. Yeah, I feel so frustrated because he was okay with her doing it in his apartment because she actually would help with laundry and dishes and he appreciated that. But in my house, it's different because it's not his stuff there. It's not even our stuff. It's 95% mine Mm. because I've lived there for seven years. Yeah. So when she's going through the house, it's not his stuff or even shared. She's going through mine. I think on the not funny side of things, I might just sit her down and say, I've lived alone for six years. I live in a way that makes my home feel like a home. And part of that is not keeping anything but the living room and guest bathroom presentable for guests. So I'm uncomfortable with her as my guest going into other rooms without asking or looking at my stuff. Beyond fair. Yeah. To like sit her down and say that. A hundred percent. Beyond fair. Yeah. Everyone's on her side. Overall vote was not the asshole. And it has easily 
two. I'm bad at math, but I see 72, 72, 42, and a bunch of others. It's like so the most I've ever seen. That's, yeah. It's like they give um, awards for the post for like if they're good. Oh, wow. Yeah. That looks like Neopets. It's kind of like what TikTok's <laughs> doing, I guess, a little bit now. Yeah. TikTok's doing it, right? Oh, if you do lives, you can get like flowers oh. and like roses and stuff. Yeah, certain platforms are starting to do it, but I think it was OG on Reddit. Yeah, I I like that. So, not the asshole. I think I've got two more for you. Okay. Oh, gosh. What ones do I want to pick, though? Oh, okay, we'll do this one. Sorry, scare everyone here. <laughs> As it comes. You're crazy. Am I the asshole for walking around my house in lingerie? So, my husband, male 34, and I, female 28, got married recently and moved into our new home. The neighborhood is nice and quiet, and the neighbors are really nice, except for this family that lives right next to us. Although we just got back from our honeymoon, I still wear lingerie and sometimes walk around in them when I wake up in the morning when making coffee or breakfast. The other day, I was in the kitchen preparing coffee while my husband was out, and I heard a knock on the door. I immediately went to grab my robe, long, before answering. I opened the door and found our next-door neighbor— I asked how he was doing, and he told me that his seven-year-old kid's window is facing our living room, and since his daughter uses binoculars, she saw me wearing inappropriate clothes while walking around in the living room. I was taken aback. Turns out his daughter uses her binoculars to supposedly watch the yard, but she obviously peeped through our large glass windows to see inside, even though we have curtains on. My neighbor said that wasn't cool, and his daughter just saw something she cannot unsee. And that is not appropriate. I asked him what he meant, and he requested that I be a little considerate when, co- when it comes to clothing or lack of. But I thought that was just ridiculous since that is in my home. I argue that this is my house and I get to wear whatever I want. And also, his daughter had no business peeping. What the fuck? He said she's just a kid and didn't mean any harm. Went as far as to say she was just being curious. I said, sorry, but you're going to have to leave. He did not take it well and implied that he'd take steps to ensure I don't expose his daughter to stuff like that in the future. He left, and I just thought my entire day was ruined, especially after he said he'd bring this incident to the neighborhood's group attention. I told my husband what happened when he got home, and he agreed with our neighbor, saying that I should just leave the lingerie in the room where it belongs and learn to put some decent clothes on before getting out of the bedroom to avoid these types of incidents. He also said I was wrong to speak to our neighbors like that, and that if he was in his shoes and his kid witnessed that, he'd be just as furious, if not more. So, we should cut our neighbors some slack. I feel like I was the asshole for how I handled the situation, but I think since I'm in my own home, then why can't I wear what I want and to be carefree? I'm confused. Am I the asshole? Um, okay. I have not heard the word binoculars in like so long. So that was <laughs> fun for me. Um, this is fucking bizarre. I think there was a horror movie just made about this. I forget who was in it. I think it was on Amazon Prime. About peeping it, toms? It was about like this couple that like used to watch their neighbors and then like they watched their neighbor like kill the girlfriend and like some some crazy stuff. So, oh my gosh. You know what I'm talking I about. I feel like I saw the trailer yes. for it. And then like she she like lived in her home was like a recluse. Yes. Yeah. Um. So this is like the PG-13 version of that. Um, bizarre, weird. If I was the girlfriend, I would be looking at my boyfriend differently. I would be looking at my neighbors differently. I would like be looking at myself differently. I just think this is so fucking weird. And like, I would turn to the neighbor and be like, okay, I walk around in the house in my underwear, but like your kids are using binoculars to look into other people's houses. And that is like... Um, what is that word? Not avoiding somebody's privacy. Uh, like Violating. Violating somebody's privacy. Like that is the bigger issue here. Yes. Not on the seven-year-old with binoculars. She's probably just like playing around. But right. it's like to take this to that extent and like I'm not here for it. No. You had the perfect opportunity to educate your child about what a peeping Tom is. And yeah. The 100%. Fact that, the fact that it's illegal. Yeah. Well, in regard – yeah, it's illegal. Yeah. But like – living growing up on a lake you look out at the lake with the binoculars because there's always wildlife and shit but you're not going to your neighbor no right but it's like a kid 
it's just a kid with binoculars. Yeah. That's the time yeah, where you just have a conversation with yeah. your kid, not go over like to the neighbor's house and tell them they're doing something wrong. Yeah. They could even be outside in their lingerie and it's not a problem. Yeah, like I'm not like not in the front yard, I guess, but. I mean, but laundry is also like a bikini too. It's like the same right. yeah. thing. These kids I'm, don't go to the pool. I know. I'm envisioning <laughs> like just like a lacy like night dress. So it's like a dress that has like lace on the top. That's like yeah. what I was envisioning. I'm not envisioning like she's walking around with like garters on. Yeah, and no, she could walk around stockings. naked in her house though. Yeah. Yeah. I think in this whole story, I think I'm the most mad with the husband. That's what I'm saying. So yeah. like, what's the issue there? Right. You know what I mean? That's weird. Like, isn't this every guy's dream to have like your hot new wife just like walking around in lingerie all the time? Like, yeah. Like, yeah, aren't you supposed to fuck like in every room? Yeah. On every surface? This <laughs> just know. seems. It yeah. just seems. He's unusual. either very scared of conflict and is very that could be weird case. about like neighbor interactions and following the rules. Mm -hmm. So he's like bowing down to what they think, but come on. Yeah. yeah. This is the time where you stick – like, this is such a simple thing to stick up for your wife. Yeah. Wife, yeah. That Right, like – Yeah. I agree. Mm. W damage control. What do you do? Bake them some brownies? Say, f you s sorry about the confrontation, but don't look in my fucking window. Here's some brownies. I think damage control is, like, I would go over there and I would be, like – I would say exactly what I was just saying earlier. I'd be, like, look, walking around in your lingerie in your house that you own is not a crime – violating somebody's privacy is this is not the kid's issue this is your issue and like we need to talk about this moving forward because if everything I do in my house is going to be viewed then like that's a fucking issue yeah you know what I mean I'd be like what do you do in your house that you don't want anybody to see I completely agree the fact she has curtains on her windows and stuff too I don't know maybe maybe buy the kid like a magnifying glass and an ant farm or like yeah. a puzzle <laughs> or slime Slime. Yeah, get her the Get him goo. on TikTok. Get him on TikTok or YouTube with the yeah. Goo Factory. Like, yeah. Joja Siwa's got a good YouTube channel for kids. Like, yeah. get on it. Uh, top comment. Not the asshole. And shame on your husband for siding with your neighbor mm -hmm. over you. In the privacy of your own home, you can wear whatever you want to wear. The neighbor should be chastising his daughter for peeping in your home instead of trying to control a grown woman's choice of dress in her own home. Maybe he's just jealous that his wife doesn't do that. Agreed. Projecting. Projecting, for sure. Or I, for a second, though, I wondered if the wife was like, you need to go over there and talk to them. Oh, his oh. wife? Yeah, like potentially. Yeah. And then so mm. he's now like, maybe he didn't even want to, but he has to go. Yeah. But then you could honest, then I think if that happens, then you have the conversation. You're like, listen, I know it's not a problem. She sent me over here, so I'm just coming over to do whatever. Like, yeah. Then you're not so adamant. So I guess maybe not because he was very... Very adamant. Yeah, he was really confrontational. The rest of this top comment goes on. If this lunatic does bring this to the intent to the attention of your neighbors and anyone has the courage to confront you, I just get really offended and ask point blank, do I tell you what to wear when you're in the privacy of your own home? Exactly. That's yeah. No. So I'd appreciate that same respect back. Yeah. True. Right? Yeah. OP said, thank you so much. Someone goes, not the asshole, and show these comments to your husband. Ouch. Yeah. Weird. Just weird to me. Yeah, that, that situation's fucked up. So goofy. You got to be a team, people. Got to be a team. Team player. Okay, last one. I'm going to let you pick. Okay. Am I the asshole for laughing hysterically after a date kept insisting to me that women have periods from their butts? Or... <laughs> Okay. Am I the asshole for my response to my sister's boyfriend's brutal honesty? Let's do sister's brutal honesty. Wow. Not period, but. Okay. My female 35 sister, female 27, started dating one of those, quote, brutally honest guys a few months ago. Oof. He can be quite rude and make backhanded comments about me and the family sometimes, which is bothersome. But my sister says he's not malicious, but is just the brutally honest type, and we should get used to it. I visited my parents' house to celebrate my sister's birthday, and my husband couldn't come with me because he was busy. After the party, we all sat down for dinner, and my sister's boyfriend said it was weird that my husband and I don't have kids, despite being married for six years now. I was shocked that he brought this up, but I gave a short answer stating that it's because of infertility issues. He asked on which side 
and I didn't want to answer, but my sister said, it's on my side. Oh. I got uncomfortable as he looked at me for a second and said that maybe not having kids now is a good thing because he thought women over 30 might produce defective babies due to age. (laughs) Wow. Title title didn't really uh, Um, get into it. Yeah, I thought it was going to be a guy who was like, that shirt makes you look fat. Not like the defective baby comments. Yeah, we're not done yet either. Oh, God. I told him it was none of his business, but he said that he was giving his honest opinion, and that's all. I, in return, told him while maintaining eye contact, trust me, if I wanted an asshole's opinion, I would have farted. That's a line in John Tucker Must Die. <laughs> Literally everyone at the table bursted into laughter, and my sister and her boyfriend were stunned. A few seconds later, her boyfriend excused himself out, and my sister followed then sent me a text after they left saying I was mean and disrespectful towards her boyfriend and insulted him maliciously just because he stated his honest opinion. She also said I ruined her birthday by being petty and making her boyfriend the joke of the night in front of the family. I didn't respond, but she demanded an apology via mail as soon as possible. (laughs) Mom agreed that I shouldn't have said what I said and should have just ignored him knowing how he is. I think I'm the asshole, but I'm not sure. Another letter situation that might hit the fan. <laughs> um, there's a couple things I could say about this. Um, first and foremost, that man is the scum of the earth. Like, he's lower than Tristan Thompson. But also, I kind of weirdly see the mom side Because sometimes when people are so, like, out of their mind and just, like, so mean and so wrong, nothing you say is going to stop them from being that way. And it's not your fault that your sister is dating this man. Like, she has to deal with him. And if you have to be around him and be, like, civil for the family, like, I wouldn't suggest going into him because, like, it's going to do nothing. Maybe being like, whoa, that crossed the line. You know what I mean? But, like, trying to, like – um, trying to change his behavior, I don't think it's going to happen. You no, know what a, I mean? He's an absolute psychopath. That's what I'm saying. So, like, I wouldn't go after him or try to change his behavior. Just know, like, obviously he's wrong and, like, I'm right. And, like, I'm just going to let this freak be with my sister. If she's not going to end it, like, I can't do anything over that. Like, I can't control that situation. No. Well, and to add to that, I think he is not going to take that as a reality check like you'd yeah, hope. Yeah. He's going to take it as – well, I didn't do anything wrong. I was just giving my honest opinion. Exactly. And so she's a terrible person now, and it's just going to make it probably worse now exactly. going forward. Yeah. Exactly. Because I, on another note, I don't understand how people get that far in life without realizing that they're being a complete asshole and that nobody likes that shit. Yeah, exactly. Nobody loves the overly honest, oh, I'm East Coast or whatever. I'm just straightforward. I'm like East the Coast. Peop- I'm not, I lived, I know, I lived in New York. Like, I have the perspective <laughs> I'm of- I'm so offended. I have the, the, I have the West Coast, East Coast, and Middle. But and using I just that feel as like, an excuse yeah, to be or, almost like But that's what I hear mean. all the time. People, and people who aren't from the East Coast a lot will say, oh, it's just, you know, they're East Coast, they're straightforward, whatever. Yeah. And I think, yes, there's, a, there's a certain degree to that that is amazing, and I love that. And I've brought that into my life, too, because yeah. being straightforward in some situations is necessary. is necessary exactly yeah but to a certain degree because there's a there's a level of honesty that never needs to be like you never you need to get to that level no and we've talked about this before like you should not ask about people's like when they're gonna have children yeah like if they're expecting if you think they look pregnant everything about that just don't yeah. fucking ask until someone tells you and like don't ask people when they're having kids you never know when they're struggling with you know fertility Which issues is horrible the like fact, horrible. Well, the fact that he like, okay, he asked, it got uncomfortable, but then the fact he doubled down and That's said- That's what I'm saying. It might be a good thing since women over 30 produce defective babies. No. Let me give you a news flash, little bitch. Men's sperm quality decreases with age too. So yeah. you better buck up and get your shit together so you can actually get married and have someone that wants to sleep with you long term and deal with your shitty attitude. Also, um, the like, I'm just really honest thing. It's like, it's the same when a guy is like- Oh, like, I'm not flirting. That's just, like, my personality. Like, Mm. you know what I mean? Which is, like, the line I hate the most. It's, like, don't use your, quote, 
brutal honesty as an excuse to get yes. yourself out of these situations. It's yeah. just not it. Because you know they have forever. Yeah. yeah. Exactly, yeah. Well, and they get away with it. This um, this reminds me – have you seen Ted Lasso at all? I've seen it, yeah. This reminds me of like Rebecca, who's the, the team's owner – and she's talking about her ex-husband, Rupert, and she said something. I think she was, like, talking to her girlfriend or Ted or someone, but she was like, I used to think his brutal honesty was so attractive and, like, something she valued. And then she said after, she was like, but now I, I see it for what it, like, truly is. It's just mean and callous and insecure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's this man. Like, yeah, absolutely insane. Like, horrible. I The sex must be really good or something with this one because otherwise, why would you want to stick around and have to deal with a pill of a person like this? Some people like a project. I, I used to. God. Yeah. Ugh. No. So Awkward. <laughs> very. You're like sitting there like. No, Justin is like, he knows he's flawless. But. Ooh, <laughs> hey. <laughs> but God, I just like, I can, I'm like, the title was very deceiving with this one. It, like just how bad it really got. Yeah, no, that was like foul. Top comment. Repeat after me. He should have just ignored me. He knows what I'm like. I'm older than him. I can't change now. I am who I am. I was just being honest. Seriously, that's my opinion of his conversation. What's that? Those excuses are toxic bullshit, mom. Cool, cool. Good to know you won't be putting up with anyone's crap from now on. Not the asshole. And then someone replies back, quote, you know how he slash she is, is the biggest cop-out response for those people who everyone knows is a rude bully. I kind of disagree with that, though. Really? No, like, I agree with it. But in this situation, it's like, what? what's going to happen from everybody? Like, what, like... Ignoring him? Yeah, I don't know. Like... I agree. Like, that is a massive cop-out. And, like, that doesn't um, – like, his behavior is still horrible. And, like, he's in the wrong. But it's, like, the sister's not going to dump him. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I don't know. Like, she does – she can stand up for herself without, like, getting into it with him because I don't think she'll get far by getting into it with him. But she mm-hmm. should. She can stick up for herself. But do you know Definitely. what I'm trying to say? Yeah. It's, like, it's like arguing with a wall. Like you're, you're never not, gonna get anywhere, you're oh. not and that's gonna, gonna like that's gonna hurt your mental health by trying to like go after somebody like that. Yeah, God, it'd just be so hard in that moment though, because you know you'd just be especially boiling with up. the fertility issue. I would fuck it. I would like pop off. I'd be bawling. I would. I think she was honestly kind of easy on him. True. Yeah. I mean, like to what we were saying before, though, it's hard to take the high road in that instance. Yeah, and maybe the best route is like you could just stand up and get out of there. Yeah, you could like. That's what Get I'm away for it for a moment or something, but it would be so fucking hard. Yeah. Yeah, go to the kitchen, have a glass of wine. Oh, and like get geez. yourself out of that situation because I'd be like, I'm not going to stoop to this person's level because clearly what he's saying is wrong but, and like I need to get out of this yeah. like, situation. Right. Well, and to your point too, Robin, like the sister isn't going to dump him. Like the sister honestly probably is finding this attractive. And one thing I kind of forgot about is like the sister also participated in this. The sister, when he asked about the fertility or the infertility and whose side was it on, the sister was the one that piped yeah, up yeah, and yeah. said, oh, it's on her. Mm-hmm. So the sister, I'm like, oh, I got a, I got an ax to grind with all these bitches. Yeah, exactly. I agree. <sighs> wow. Well, I hope this all works out for OP. Yeah. There's no official update, um, but there are a lot of comments from her. She's like, I was just genuinely caught off guard by his words and was also angry but trying to stay calm. Mm -hmm. Apparently, he got offended and so was my sister, although she sat there the entire time ignoring his remarks that were directed at me. So, yeah, fuck that sister too. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's like another issue of this. Yeah, there's there's a lot of levels here. Mm -hmm. Damage control, does there need to be any or just let it? I think damage control would be to have a serious conversation with the sister and being like, if I know you're not going to leave him, like, that's fine. But, like, I really don't want him around, especially in these intimate family conversations because it's extremely hurtful. And if I can't have him change what he says, then, like, maybe you can listen to me and, like, take him out of the equation. Yeah. Or say you need to, like, muzzle your, muzzle your fucking yeah, dog. Exactly. Yeah. Like, muzzle your dog. Like, tell him to keep his fucking mouth shut at these family things if he's got to be there. Yeah, 100%. Well, that's all I got for you. That was really fun. <laughs> that was really fun. We it was got, like therapy. We got a little heated. Yeah. 
your takes were spot on. Thank you. It's been a pleasure having you. Well, thank you so much for having me on. I think that what you're doing here is incredible. Um, I admire like how you've built this just from day one and like look at where it's at now. Oh, thank um, you. And I'm excited to see your PR moves for the future. I'm excited. I'm going to consult you. Hire you for the team. Hey. Plug your socials so people know where to find you. At Girlbosstown, G-I-R-L-B-O-S-S-T-O-W-N on Instagram and TikTok. I'll make sure I post her links in the description, you guys. But until next time. Until next time. Until next time. Bye, guys. I just want to thank today's amazing partners again, Cerebral, OB Fitness, HelloFresh, and Bloom Nutrition. I'll be sure to put all of the links and promo codes in the description. So be sure to check them out. 